why we have the course syllabi template that can be used and get it approved at your university. Yeah. It, I don't know the politics of how you get curriculum approved. If you have a course that sounds similar to a forensic practice class where you just offer in the syllabus, if you can change around the syllabus and then offer the textbooks and organize it into a section based on the overarching theories, uh, overview of the dis different systems of care, and then the skill building, these skills really can be applied, even from a generalist practice. There are also other professional organizations historically that uh, have focused in various ways on forensic practice, but I think that the idea of getting good consultation is important now to help develop standalone courses since the field has evolved a bit and uh, requires, a, uh, requires a little bit more attention to changing competencies and the focusing of the social work profession. What they can now call grand challenges um, is, uh, is an important part of getting consultation to develop a course. This book will help with developing a standalone syllabus with all the areas that you need in each three parts of the book. You'll be able to develop easily a 15-week seminar if you're in a uh, sort of a trimester system or a quarter system. It will lend itself well to that through the writing that went into this version of the book, there is a, the, the nuts and bolts are there for someone to be able, an instructor, to pick up the, the book and be able to develop a syllabus from it and to really have a good working sense. It's, it's collaboratively written. It has professions from all of the disciplines. So for example, if you find yourself having nurses or psychologists or health professionals in your course, in addition to social workers, it would cr cut across. Uh, there wouldn't be anybody left out in terms of content. Many social work programs have focus areas, and now we t use the language of focus areas. Or so, specialization. Or specialization. And we find that this book could be used across specializations. That includes uh, things that are related to uh, community-based practice, or things that involve uh, work in child welfare, or any kind of advocacy work. This book will be able to be used in, in a number of specializations, not just a standalone f forensic social work class, but certainly, uh, programs will find, if, if it's admissible to the program, and you have the space and the student um, interest in it, you'll find that you'll be able to do that too. And that, in fact, uh, recent surveys in our own program show that anywhere between 30 to 50 percent of the students, when they're introduced to the notion of forensic social work, say they would like to study it, and are just waiting for a course like that to be offered, truly. There was in it, the late 1800s that the social work profession, before it became professionalized, was founded, an earlier iteration of it was a National Conference of Charity and Corrections. This precedes the professionalization of social work, which began in around 1910. So our roots are founded where charity meets justice. And we have had this unique form of caring justice that could be captured in what we call forensic social work. The current competencies with CSWE, the 2015 EPOS, begin to full circle. We've come home to what we did back when, when social workers like Jane Addams in the late 1800s, early 1900s, they advocated for the establishment of a juvenile justice system that took juveniles out of adult correctional facilities. And they worked in concert with lawyers and other professionals in the field to bring awareness that youth have unique rehabilitative needs or, and they're in a different developmental stage than adults and we need to separate them. So they talked about life course development and they advocated for policy change and that, that one little court system that started in Chicago soon spread across the United States and worldwide. We've come home again. This text puts it all together. Along those lines, uh, this, the book also helps make the case of bridge, the importance of bridging the micro, meso, and macro dimensions of practice. So many programs struggle and keep them somewhat dichotomized, micro and macro practice. As someone that's been working clinically for a long time and trained as a clinical professional social worker, um, there was never a time that didn't have to draw from the more broader policy socioeconomic issues that impacted the clinical practice. This book helps make those bridges.